Acesta este Curious Lion Podcast, prezentat de ING. Hello and welcome at the 2020 Curious Lion Podcast edition. Last year we talked at the GoTech World, an offline event. It's weird right now to think about it. We were meeting business partners, we were listening to the speakers and maybe meeting them afterwards. But today we are at home, we are working mainly in our home office. We are sitting there from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and we are online every single day. So about this, we will talk today at the Curious Ryan podcast. In 2020, this podcast can be listened in your favorite streaming platform or video. Today, I am talking uh, with Razvan Siginash, Chief Information Officer at ING Bank Romania. Welcome, Razvan. Hey, hello. Uh, hello, Vlad, to you and, uh, and to your listeners slash viewers. Uh, greetings again from my own home office, where, uh, where I'm working from, I think, for the most uh, part, biggest part of the last half a year. Uh, good to see you uh, again, even in these conditions. Yeah. So uh, talking about about things that changed in in the last year, we thought that things will change, but not like this. So I'm going to start just just with a, a professional and personal question. What has changed for you uh, since last year? Well, um, I think um, although um, I think a lot of change for everybody, uh, both for me personally, uh, for us as an organization, for all our customers, and for us as a human uh, kind as a whole. Uh, I can say that fortunately there's um, there's a good chunk which is still staying true. Uh, last year we were talking about uh, digitalization, about what this does to us as a consuming uh, um, services in the financial industry, uh, what this does for us as businesses, as society. Uh, and I think the last six months uh, or so actually put that to a lot of tests, right? So maybe some things that we were talking about a year ago are, are more, more of an urgent reality than, uh, than ever. So um, that's, I think, uh, the good and the bad in, the, in, in this, because now I think we all need to, to step up to that vision, because unfortunately the conditions that we're, uh, we're navigating right now um, are are confirming that uh, that is actually necessary. Last year we talked uh, at the GoTech uh, World uh, 2019 um, about the development of the home bank app from from ING Romania about the features that uh, were going to be implemented, um, and you mentioned right now that the pandemic uh, changed this this approach, maybe the roadmap to a more urgent uh, matter, uh, features that maybe were programmed six months from now uh, have become uh, a matter of tomorrow, we have to launch them. So um, talking about the Home Bank app, I want to uh, ask you, uh, what has changed uh, for, the, for the app? Uh, what features have appeared uh, dependent on the pandemic, but also which were on your, on your roadmap to the digitalization of the services? Um, basically, our intention to make the home bank application as a, as a bank in a, bo- in a pocket uh, was one that we've established a long time ago, and it still stays true. It's even truer now than ever. Uh, even uh, right before the pandemic, I think in January, we, we launched the, the end-to-end onboarding <clears throat> of customers through the home bank channel and probably could have not chosen a more fortuitous moment because uh, we saw that uh, uh, immediately after the pandemic kicked in, uh, the kind of adoption, that kind of um, uh, proposition was uh, started having for our customers was immense. Uh, it was one of those features that was uh, right there um, um, at the need uh, both of our customers to be safe and still conduct a, a healthy uh, banking uh, life, as well as for us as an organization, which, uh, let's be honest, we also need to keep our employees safe. So um, even in the uh, early days of the lockdown uh, in, April, in March and April, uh, we've seen that the, that service was really put to test. And actually, it really paid off. It, it looked, it confirmed that um, the way we had built it, the way we had hoped for it to be consumed, uh, was there. Um, 
plus uh, I think it came as an imp- as a very good uh, way for us to conduct our own business because in the initial days we also had um, you know the need to protect our employees in the front line in the offices so the fact that we we could deflect all of that from the physical presence to be carried for, uh, on the digital side was uh, was amazing um, then I think as the pandemic kicked in, um, there were two aspects that really drove uh, subsequent changes. First of all, it was the, the change in the customer behavior. And as always, we try to be very receptive uh, to the customer feedback, uh, as well as uh, to understand and predict a bit what's coming next. And as well, uh, as, well as that, it was the, the regulatory uh, changes, because as you know, uh, there's been all sorts of um, legal requirements of all sorts that actually were specific to this, to this very shifting uh, period. Uh, things like payment holidays, uh, further um, analysis, further interactions with the customers which were required. I think they all uh, came to accelerate a bit to your question, uh, some uh, changes to the channel uh, that we, uh, we actually had to do much faster in order to support that kind of an interaction in a remote manner. And this kind of changes, I think they have been the theme of um, uh, April, May towards June of a lot of changes that we brought into the channel. Um, the customer behavior, as I was saying, on the other hand, is equally important. And we've seen that the, 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 lev- the usage of the digital channel actually inc- increased um, tremendously year on year. If you look at months like um, August or September, we saw traffic increases which were in the neighborhood of 50% uh, from the previous uh, similar months of the, uh, of the year before, uh, both in terms of volumes of, um, uh, of access of the, tra- of, the, um, of the traffic, but also in how many of the services there have been used. And we've, we've actually seen a much greater sale percentage coming for the digital channel. Uh, which, because of this process enhancements, have been doing, have been performed now end to end there. Uh, so this raised a lot of uh, opportunities for us to fine tune uh, the flows, the processes, to make sure that they are uh, best adequately fit for this situation. Um, and also, uh, it also involved for us a lot of work for us in the back end to ensure that all of this scale that is uh, has been needed was uh, was built up. To, uh, in a consistent manner, in a way that the customers don't really uh, feel that uh, there is any kind of stress. So we invested a lot in, in the scalability and the performance of, uh, of the application, of the underlying uh, infrastructure of the security. Um, um, and um, basically, we could support this um, highly increased uh, leverage uh, level of usage um, quite, quite well uh, in the months that came. Um, we've also added, I think, a lot of uh, our work has been on, uh, on ensuring also the security and the re- reliability of the solution because uh, in this time, and I've seen you've seen, I'm sure you've felt, you've seen the news, there has been um, also an increase of the cyber crime uh, across, uh, across the world. And of course, we were not a stranger to, to that. Unfortunately, we are very much uh, uh, a target of such uh, events, unfortunate events ourselves. So um, ensuring that uh, we are adequately prepared, we are uh, trying to, uh, uh, it was actually a priority in this, in this month. And uh, I think I'm very, very proud by all of the ING team that I think really did an amazing um, task to, to make this uh, oblivious to the customers. It's, it's important, you know, to be in front of the customers with what, you, what they need, but also uh, at the right moment to, to be there, uh, you know, and not know that they need you. <laughs> and I think, and I think that uh, our discussion one year um, after our our first talk at the Curious Ryan podcast, um, I think it's it's one of the most practical uh, examples uh, I have in the last eight months of how things have changed. Because I remember what we talked last year and what you were preparing, and right now we see the needs of the customers and. Um, you told me right now about about these uh, these needs about the digital onboarding process, uh, which was which was launched in in January uh, before the the pandemic came here in in Romania. And I want to stop at the digital onboarding first. Um, and 
I think that 2020, uh, after you launched in January, the pandemic came and we saw the um, this increase in the market of, of the digital onboarding needs uh, from also from, from other banks. Uh, it was a need that people were uh, talking um, about. Uh, maybe they were talking about fintechs and they saw, okay, we can, we can onboard there very fast. Um, why does my bank doesn't do this? And now it does. Um, so how hard is talking about the digital onboarding process to make it secure? Because you also mentioned about cybercrime and the issues of, of 2020. Well, um, I think to, of course, the digital onboarding is, uh, is already uh, um, an intrinsic expectation of the customers. Uh, and I think we, we have taken uh, bold steps in that regard. But uh, to your question of how difficult it is, unfortunately, in Romania, it is, a, it is quite difficult. Uh, because in many countries where uh, such processes are already uh, well established, there is an underlying uh, infrastructure, either in the government, uh, public administration, um, public services, um, or, uh, or in, uh, in the, um, for instance, um, the supply, for instance, for electronic signature, the legislation for that, which is actually much richer. Unfortunately, many of these uh, facilitators, let's say, for such uh, type of engagement are, are coming a bit short in Romania. So uh, doing this here uh, is actually a very heavy process and uh, involves, I think, uh, a lot of work to do it right which maybe in other economies uh, would not necessarily be the case. Uh, so I think this is probably one of the main uh, things that make this tougher for us uh, here, but, um, and also I think is um, still acts as an inhibitor for subsequent processes and services that we can provide also fully digitally to customers, because although, you know, uh, intrinsic in the onboarding process there are all, all sorts of steps for authorization, authentication of the customer, first analysis, etc. When you're talking about supplying the customer with more complex services, with more complex uh, products uh, there, there's subsequent steps and complexities which unfortunately are, um, are also present in Romania. And um, in this period, I think um, there were all sorts of um, um, different uh, situations that uh, the, even our customers were encountered with. Uh, for instance, uh, during the lockdown, uh, should you have to uh, no, change your ID, your, your national ID? This was a big of, a bit is, a big of an issue, right, in, in that period. So uh, creating uh, automatic digital processes that actually, for instance, do a simple validity check of your ID, uh, I think is, a, is equally interesting to, to do into this market. So. To your point, I think technology-wise, things are, are are much simpler, unfortunately, than actually the um, regulatory administrative part around it, which has is been actually a complicated uh, still process for us. Last year, we talked um, in depth about the need uh, to converge many services in uh, in in one app to to create this experience mm -hmm. uh, almost of a marketplace. And going back to, to what you said about the client needs, um, what have you found out this year about what they need? Uh, what was redundant for them and what you needed to, to add to the app uh, to make it uh, a more pleasurable experience for, for the clients and useful, of course? Well, um this this shifts uh, the shifting of multiple customer trends has been actually uh, quite visible for a while but as i was saying this period made made an acceleration of that what the major the theme i would say is the fact that many of other uh, the other products and services has also have also been digitalized in the meanwhile for instance the way that people manage cash in this period or payments Right. In this period, we've seen that from many accounts, the trend into uh, card payments, into electronic payments um, has been a very important one. Uh, the moment uh, people change the way that they uh, you know, buy things, that they uh, manage, uh, you know, uh, manage to access to their finances uh, during the pandemic, we were fortunate, I think, to, to have uh, a lot of the building blocks, a lot of the capabilities in place to bring that together in a coherent way to the customers. And for instance, 
uh, features like the electronic payments uh, capabilities that we have, like mobile payments, we've seen that them picking up quite uh, quite importantly. And uh, basically, we are fortunate uh, from from that perspective in the in the market to have some interesting uh, trends here. For instance, more than ninety percent of the cards uh, commerce, the card payments process in uh, in Romania is actually contactless. It's almost nine, almost two hundred percent, to be honest, uh, which you don't see in other markets. And that allowed us to accelerate a lot of the mobile payments features that we have uh, uh, into the app. It also allowed to change the way that we uh, with grant access to cash because we also launched the, the cashless ATM uh, feature. So when people actually needed some cash, um, that uh, hustle, you know, the plastic of having the plastic with them uh, really went away. That is one of the first things that actually I think we see as going out. No more plastic. Uh, it's just uh, the screen that uh, that does all of that. So this kind of um, change in the in the way that people try to uh, treat cash, in the way that people um, uh, engaged with payments and uh, and e-commerce, uh, really accelerated it. Uh, from from the perspective of e-commerce, uh, I mean I'm sure it's is no news. I think everybody during the pandemic uh, really shifted to to supplying themselves uh, more into that. So um, basically, right now we have. Um, we have extended, let's say, the, the network of our digital relationships with all sorts of partners and players. We're trying to uh, offer actually much more uh, meaningful interactions in the way that uh, the, the e-commerce business is being conducted, both for the end customers and actually very importantly for, um, for the businesses. Because um, what we've seen, unfortunately, in this period is a lot of stress actually uh, inflicted on the on, on the businesses, on the retailers, on the, on the multiple businesses that were customer facing. So we've also looked on how we can uh, build uh, that part of the process in a way that uh, we can facilitate in a sustainable way the shift of the businesses towards a, uh, a digital business model. Uh, for us, the this means a lot because um, the way that we look at the digital business model, I think it's a very robust uh, way of doing it, which unfortunately many companies in, uh, in the market did not really have the chance to build uh, before the pandemic. So we've started to act as, um, uh, as a partner for, for, such, uh, for such companies for in, uh, in many of these engagements um, to, to bridge our uh, banking infrastructure to support that transition for them. Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned about about uh, the percentage of contactless payments, and I tried when you were talking to remember the last time I inserted a card into into um, a machine, and I cannot remember. I think I think it's one year and a half at least. And the last time a uh, um, merchant told me the the machine is not contactless, and it was very weird. To, um, to it's, a, it's a it's a complex uh, shift into digital that we've seen customers doing across the board, and these are just signs of a, of a trend which has been with us for a while, but now it's accelerated. If we look, for instance, of um, this past uh, the, of the year to so far, we already see that uh, payments have been radically shifting into that. We see that, for instance, uh, a quarter of our sales are actually done fully for digital. Uh, almost forty percent of all loan access is actually done through the digital channel and uh, it, that in that within that 40 percent 90 percent of it is actually for mobile so pretty much to your point uh, i don't think uh, people have been using plastic anymore and i doubt actually people are using monitors anymore it's it's the phone itself we see that shift within the digital space into mobile actually accelerating at a tremendous rate you mentioned that um, other services from from ING uh, shifted uh, to a to a one hundred percent digital experience. Right now, in the pandemic, for the customers, the app was um, was a very a very good hub. But right now, has more services connected to it. So I want to um, um, enter a bit more in this in this subject. What other services were digitalized and how? During the pandemic, we've looked uh, at two things, I think. First, the way that the customers were using our, exter our existing services and how they need to be shifted and presented to the customer in a way which is most relevant to them. 
as well as uh, uh, indeed what other needs are out there how much uh, how different how much other services would need to be uh, blended into the current uh, customer journeys in a way that uh, that is actually seamless and relevant for them uh, so we did a lot on both accounts. Um, even starting last, last year when we actually had uh, our previous conversation on this, uh, we had actually embarked on a, uh, as an organization within, on a strategy to uh, evolve the technology of our channel uh, into native technologies. Um, you remember the conversation we had about bringing uh, the most uh, adequate uh, customer experience possible, uh, moving from big segments into segments of one, bringing that unique experience that the customer needs to have, uh, which is most relevant to him or her, not to, uh, let's say, uh, the segment, the cohort that they're part of. This kind of unique experience provide, uh, relevant to the um, um, to the cust to the content that they most want mostly want to use and to their own, own context is very important. And technically this involved for us um, this kind of roadmap. And throughout this year, we've done a lot of such changes. For instance, we've uh, one of the first changes that uh, were visible to the customer uh, in the early summer were uh, the different uh, welcome screens, the different uh, look and feel on the on the home page. Then, uh, throughout several releases um, uh, up to recently in the fall, uh, we've modernized the payments uh, hub, which was a very complex mix of services, which unfortunately was no longer um, as relevant as intuitive for, uh, for customers. And that really required a different, uh, more customer-centric approach to make sure that the right services are presented most, most uh, effectively to the customers. Um, and this kind of maybe less visible but very meaningful changes we've also applied across many of the customer journeys. The, um, the lending flow, for instance, the end-to-end -end lending flow, which actually yielded some very important figures, as I was saying, 40% of the loans that were uh, acquired by customers during uh, this period have been coming for the digital channel, was also uh, streamlined and optimized, uh, both looking at user data and understanding where the users um, are actually um, um, you know, uh, facing issues, facing uh, challenges with the flows, but also listening to customer feedback. So let me, uh, to put it uh, simply, we, we invested a lot into making sure that the application is now safe, reliable, and relevant for these critical flows, not necessarily adding big new things uh, right now, which did not necessarily uh, meet the customer uh, needs uh, during this period. And now we're at the point where, although we still have uh, quite an interesting roadmap of such uh, features, which we are going to release uh, quite, quite often uh, to the customers, um, we are also looking at, uh, at some broader things like um, bringing new products uh, related to insurance, uh, uh, building uh, early in the next year uh, a new proposition for the um, uh, discount uh, uh, business that we have with ING Bazaar. Uh, we've actually launched uh, that fintech uh, here in the market in Romania that we were talking about last year called DealWise. DealWise is now fully operational as a standalone um, business for, uh, for Romanian customers and is actually also launching in other geographies. And soon it will come to uh, to change the the uh, the proposition we have through home bank uh, to them uh, m mixing uh, the the great business proposition that now it uh, Dealwise can offer uh, with a very interesting um, uh, targeting process that we want to uh, bring to the customers. So. Um, these have been a bit the, the priorities for us and with, uh, we feel that um, it's now actually for us more important to evolve uh, with that vision in sight and with that uh, with a kind of end goal in sight uh, than have uh, disruptive uh, changes that uh, are, are not necessarily meeting the customer's expectations. Ultimately, for us, the vision is the same. We, we will be uh, steadily evolving into a... a, a a digital proposition which um, provides to the customers the most relevant uh, features and, and services that are needed for them, even growing beyond the banking. Basically, our vision is that of a platform um, that uh, spans way beyond uh, our, our, our classic uh, targets. And DealWise is actually now the first um, uh, on the radar as big things. 
but the prerequisites for that uh, actually leads to um, this understanding of our customers, which uh, now the, the new capabilities uh, within Home Bank uh, offer us. You mentioned uh, earlier in our discussion um, this concept, um, an app for all the banking you need. And when I when I uh, uh, listen to you right now, uh, I'm thinking that it's not about having the biggest marketplace, but having the most personalized experience in an app that has uh, a lot of features available, but not putting them um, in front of the customer. 30, 40 options, exactly. and, but let, letting the customer choose. Letting the customer choose and actually not actually making the choice something that is very complex and, and, uh, and uh, not relevant for them because we can make sure that uh, the most relevant uh, features, the most relevant services uh, are actually brought there f f in front of them to be more, uh, more accessible and uh, make sure that the application is therefore responsive and adaptive to the adapting to the customer uh, way of using it um in the in the future um right now what uh, what other processes are you looking into um to make this shift to a digitalization a full digitalization of uh the bank's services and not only the banks, because you mentioned dealways, and it's not just about the core bank, but uh, having uh, um, different services around it. I think that goes in two, uh, two main directions. The first is, uh, I think, um, uh, the um, ensuring that we actually have a very uh, streamlined platform behind our products and services that enables us to have very good time to market and very uh, smart ways of exposing such new customers such new propositions to our customers so now the platform i would say is is actually quite uh, quite robust and quite ready to deliver that and we are actually building this kind of onboarding uh, means to um, to bring this kind of propositions uh, faster and faster to our customers the second one is data um, data is something that we as a bank um, actually leverage a lot in a lot of processes and now uh, what we're doing is shifting a bit of um, that the way that we leverage the data and how we analyze that data into much more meaningful uh, customer insights because what we need to do is actually uh, drive more meaningful customer journeys uh, through the data and through the wealth of services that we can put into that customer's uh, customer journey so um, that uh, the, these two things, these two ingredients, I think, will drive uh, the smartest way to, to the, the way to evolve this on the long run. Because through that, we can make that very meaningful for you. For instance, when you are having a new member in your family, a new child, when you want to buy uh, something that uh, a new car, a new house, when you're facing maybe some uh, some more. Um, um, you know, problematic periods, uh, for instance, related to the economic crisis, to understand your behavior and try to make sure that you it's not only the sales process, but the way that we service you and we cater you as a customer is adequate to this context that you're, you're living in. So this is a, these two ingredients will help us have this meaningful customer journeys in a way that uh, they are really relevant for you as an individual. Um, and we managed to to build basically on the the relationship of trust we need we want to have with our customers. I know that I'm talking with the chief information officer at the ING Bank, but I want to ask you about the physical part of banking. Uh, we see right now on the market uh, a thing that we saw in in ING in the last few years, um, because the physical location of banks. Um, are becoming mm -hmm. maybe hubs of technology with machines that, that can be controlled via a smartphone or a card, but not with human operators. So what's the role right now of the physical environment of the bank, of this relationship between humans, which is more complicated right now in, in a pandemic, um, but maybe in two years when all of this will, will pass, definitively. Uh, people will still need an interaction. But for what? Um, let me 
give you two answers. One, uh, looking at the short term, because even in this period, that physical presence uh, is very meaningful. And also one looking at uh, maybe at a longer horizon. Um, on the short term, um, it, we are actually at the point where we uh, all of our physical presence is actually extremely digitalized and very mobile. So even now, basically, uh, our offices are operating with uh, uh, only a small percentage of the staff physically uh, present in the office, while um, a good percentage are actually working from home uh, and still servicing customers almost like they are physically in the office. <clears throat> so. The fact that we've managed to, for a number of years, to really uh, deliver on a vision to have a very consistent omni-channel experience for the customers, uh, our vision has always been that um, the offices uh, need to be a digital presence. Uh, the, the experience and the, uh, the processes that are taking place there uh, must not be necessarily rooted into the physical presence, but linked into the, the digital channels and how the customer is actually serviced end-to-end. That actually paid off quite quite nicely. And right now, uh, we see that uh, even if you look from our own perspective, um, I think the level of uh, effectiveness and, and productivity that our colleagues uh, from the first line that are working from home, they still have in this period, is actually quite impressive. Uh, because they are not necessarily bound to that physical location. They can and, uh, build that customer relationship they have with the people that they know that live across the street uh, and still nurture that well they're not actually physically there um, on the long run uh, for us that digital uh, statement still stands because we don't want the customers to come to the bank because they have to our ambition is for them to come to the bank because they they want to because they want to learn something because they want to have a conversation uh, and get some advice uh, because they want to understand what's new and simply want to hear it from a person not necessarily get it advertised, pushed to them from uh, from within an app. Um, so uh, it needs to be a, a, a nice experience, one which is more, uh, you know, more, more, more similar to a coffee shop uh, than to uh, to the classic bank. Uh, and this means that we all of those heavy burden processes, we're trying to get them out of there. So you don't have to come there to, to do that kind of work. Um, so it's more of a relation. It's more of a means for the customers to know us and ask crazy questions. No, there's no stupid questions. We can definitely that we really encourage that kind of an exploratory relationship, and also for our colleagues to to understand the customers better because um, it's important to understand the the real context, the story. Uh, behind the customers and build that relationship in a meaningful manner. And this goes to say for uh, private individuals, but also for companies alike, because uh, understanding the reality of a company is actually something that uh, spans beyond the, the, the P&L statement, the balance sheet of the bank. You need to understand what the entrepreneur have in mind, uh, what, uh, what risks they encounter, uh, how they're conducting their business. To, to build that uh, relationship that is actually based on trust, not only on the hard numbers. So to our listeners or viewers, uh, I wanted to repeat this um, this interesting term you, you said, FIGITO. Uh, it wasn't an error, it's not digital, it's FIGITO. Um, I like it as, as a concept. Um, I want to switch a bit to to a more technical uh, part of our of our conversation. You mentioned a bit about how you um, build elements inside uh, your products, inside the application, about cybercrime. Um, how do you? What what kind of improvements uh, were made um, in terms of security for making in for making a very secure app, even if in in these times when uh, when cybercrime is on the rise well i think um as as home bank is actually uh, one of the channels to be honest i was just uh, mentioning uh, the that omni channel approach which is very important uh, the way that we need to look at security, that's fraud, for instance, or the technology risk is actually also a 360 view uh, of that. So I think 
from a from a home bank perspective, um, uh, the changes that have been performed there are mo most of the cases uh, transparent to the users. We're trying to make this as hassle free as possible uh, to the customer that is actually using home bank, and it's actually built uh, very much into um, the, uh, the the application and how it's being accessed. Because in reality, we've seen that in this period, there's been a lot of um, uh, cyber threats. There's been a lot of customers that have been affected by malware, for instance. And we're making the application um, as resilient as possible to this kind of uh, situations um, when being accessed to the customers, by the customers. Uh, and it goes to, to the way that the, the user authentication is being done, but it also um, has to do with smarter controls that we need to uh, encapsulate in the application. So potential such comprom compromising of the uh, user's devices, for instance, is actually detected and uh, and is being treated in a way that uh, users can be made aware of them. We can proactively take actions to make sure that there's, as, uh, there's no fraudulent transactions initiated or access to information from third parties that should not be allowed to access it. Uh, unfortunately, the past six months um, really um, uh, meant uh, a significant uh, progression of such uh, such events which we also were uh, monitoring and uh, trying to act uh, there and be present as, as often as possible um, from a 360 view perspective of course uh, a lot of the security here is actually uh, looking at how uh, the entire uh, customer journey uh, is with us and we're trying for instance to understand from data you know how the customers are actually uh, uh, behaving in the interaction with us so we can also not necessarily look at individual transactions but the end-to-end the end -end, uh, patterns for instance for our customers to understand whether they have really uh, been the source for instance uh, of specific transactions or specific uh, uh, actions that they've done or there is a, some sort of pattern uh, that we need to uh, be aware of and uh, raise to the uh, attention of the customers so uh, there's been a lot of work and there will still be a lot of work um, in this uh, broader uh, space of uh, what we call know your customer because we, the more we understand uh, the customer the better we can make sure that their interest is protected uh, that uh, this uh, trust that we need to build with them is also met from from our end um, so this kind of capabilities uh, will continue to be an important theme for us even going into 2021 uh, and uh, as I was saying, they they actually go in a lot of places uh, of us of the organization at the channel, but definitely not only there. Um, you mentioned about updates uh, and pushing updates to to the customers um, at a fast rate. Um, so I want to ask you, um, how does it look this this process of of updating the app? and testing it before? How much testing goes into an update, basically? Well, um, this this is actually linked to our way of working, which is a, an agile process that we employ across the bank. Uh, the channel, of course, the home bank channel is uh, makes no difference to that. It's, it's part of this entire paradigm that uh, we, we, we plan, we run across the bank. And uh, the testing here is uh, it, just, uh, it is uh, in base, base, built on multiple layers. Uh, first, of course, there is the software development discipline that is run behind this, uh, which involves <clears throat> testing at some very low technical layers, which uh, we are actually conducting <clears throat> to a great extent in an automatic manner. There's a constant investment in making sure that we are able to test all those necessary components, scenarios from a functional, non-functional security perspective as well. Uh, equally important at later stages in the process is, of course, the, the testing that we've done, we've done with the actual employees that really need to understand from a business perspective whether the outcome is actually uh, compliant, is actually adequate for the changes that we do. And last but not least, uh, we often uh, do beta testing with um, uh, some um, uh, friendly customer base that we constantly engage with, especially for changes which are actually much more um, uh, impactful when it, when it comes to user experience. Uh, so, for instance, the, the native uh, technologies that we've integrated into Home Bank uh, in the past months in the throughout this year have been actually the main releases for them have been uh, 
passed through this kind of uh, beta testing quite extensively and uh, we've taken actually a lot of action uh, starting from the, um, the feedback that we were getting into that from that process. You mentioned about about uh, working uh, and using the agile uh, way of way of doing things, uh, and I just want to change the subject just for a moment about how how was this period for for your team for you, for the uh, ING's technical team uh, working? I suppose uh, most of them remotely. Um, was it so different from I don't know last year when everybody was in the office? Well, it was very different um, in the pro in the sense that uh, ever since the lockdown started um, uh, and still now, we're actually working predominantly from home. Um, it, I My team in ING is uh, a little more than 500 people. And uh, in an average for this period, um, we've had under 10 people in the office at any given time. You can make plot the math, the percentage yeah. is, uh, is quite big. So um, this meant actually that <clears throat> we actually managed to, to achieve all our outcomes. I mean, we, we are very keen on making sure that we deliver on what we commit. So uh, we actually made sure first that does, this does not um, hinder in any of our commitments. And the good news is that we are, we are successful with that. Still, there is a soft side to this. There is a subjective side to this. And uh, we actually uh, have done a lot of work internally, ensuring that we support the team from an emotional process, stand perspective, for instance, throughout this period, that we survey constantly, that we build uh, the right kind of communities internally to make sure that people are communicating, are keeping close, get that feel of um, uh, a team, of uh, the, the culture that we, we want to have as your organization. And on that side, let me just say that I don't think we can ever do enough because unfortunately, uh, there's only so much that you can um, replace um, social distancing with digital proximity. They will never be equal. Uh, we are still social uh, individuals and um, many of, much of the feedback that I hear from my team, of course, goes in the sense of uh, uh, I miss my colleagues, right? So. I think this is something for us to uh, to really still work on because it will continue to be a reality <clears throat> as long as we still operate like this. We are approaching the the end of our conversation, and I wanted to um, go back a bit from the technical point of view to the human uh, side. And we talked about the employees, and it's a good it's a good um, um, way of of going. Um, on the human side of the customers of a bank, they, I don't know, the people want every, every single time they want um, apps and services that run 100%, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So just as a curiosity, um, because it happens to, to all of us, what happens um, from your perspective when an app crashes? What's there? <clears throat> what happens when an app crashes? <clears throat> well, I can tell you we are 99.9% .9 of time up. This is this is a this is a hard facts. This is hard numbers. Mm -hmm. And that's still not good enough for us. I mean, we're still investing in making sure that 0 0.007 something percent uh, is not there. However, I think um, the, the, a crash could happen at any time, let's say. And uh, ultimately, we need to make sure that uh, that agreement that we have with our customers, we can still uh, sustain that or can, first of all, communicate. This is the first thing that we do whenever there is something wrong, there, there is an incident, there is a problem. We communicate to customers. We, we tell them that something's happening. We ensure that we are working on that. We are trying to understand individual complaints, individual problems, individual issues, and alleviate that as much as possible. So the first thing, this is actually something, a, a constant that should happen, have that dialogue going on. Uh, when, uh, when, the, when such issues happen, I think uh, we all need to understand that uh, both perspectives need to be, uh, you know, 
understood and represented, uh, both from our perspective to understand what is the actual customer's urgency and try to address that. And from a customer perspective, uh, they need to be aware and feel that we are there, we are present. I think in, in, a, in an outage period, no news is bad news from both ends. Mm -hmm. And if there is this kind of dialogue, we can go together for, for any of such issues, any of such hurdles. At the beginning of our conversation, uh, you, you mentioned about onboarding and uh, regulatory um, issues and that the process would be much easier if, if we'd had not, you have the technical side of it, but the regulatory side is, is still not ready. So can we see in, in the future, in the near future maybe, um, a banking app that you can install, enter your phone number um, and try to make an account? What's, what's the easier, uh, easiest way um, of, of digital onboarding you are thinking about, not, not from what you can do right now in Romania. I hear you. So we need to uh, accept the fact that banking uh, involves a specific level of due diligence, right? A specific level of um, identification of the parties involved, a specific level of understanding of the behavior of the parties. So probably the best, uh, the optimal way we could look in the north near short horizon for such an experience to operate is, okay, you install an app, you input your personal identifier from uh, right your CNP uh, in Romanian, and that itself informs me of who you are. I can identify you fully uh, without you having to uh, bring any further documentation, identifications, etc. If that step is actually something that we can um, uh, automate as much as possible, which we cannot do simply as a bank. It needs to be something that is supported by the local legislation, by um, some of the local authorities. It's something that could be extremely beneficial for all of us um, uh, and actually uh, simplifies all the know your customer processes, which I mentioned earlier, which unfortunately carry a lot of this um, hustle, which is specific to onboarding process, as well as to important changes in customer life cycle. For instance, whenever you want to buy a house, this big type of events involve such uh, interactions, which are obviously uh, quite frictionful. Uh, and could be very much avoided uh, through a different kind of um, regulatory framework, which not, does not necessarily needs to be more lenient, but it could be more simple and more digital. Um, and also with some investments, uh, obviously, in, a, in a digital government processes, let's say. Rezvan, thank you very much for, for this conversation and for the, all the details. Thank you very much and uh, let's all keep safe uh, and we'll get through this together. And thank you for um, all the people who, who listen to the Curious Ryan podcast, this episode with uh, Razvan Siginaj, Chief Information Officer at ING Bank uh, Romania. If you listened on your favorite um, uh, streaming platform, uh, uh, you I can say to you that you can also see this podcast this year we are recording this uh on video and publish them online so thank you very much for listening and watching and keep safe <laughs>